friends, our viewers, I welcome you once again to our YouTube channel. You subscribe to us by going and you search for Hyper and Chiwafu Academic Channel. By subscribing, you can comment, you can share the link, the rest of the fellows uh, for more videos. Now, action of acidic buffer. In our previous video, we were looking at what a buffer solution is. We looked at two types of buffer solutions, which we categorized into acidic buffer and alkaline buffer. And we looked at examples of each. Now in this video, you want to see how each type of buffer solution works. In the point of beginning, we are beginning with acidic buffer. We want to see how an acidic buffer works. Now, before you know how the acidic buffer works, you need to know the example. You pick one example out of the many we've looked at. But it's better to deal with a simpler example or a, an example of the common uh, uh, substances. So for this case, we are going to consider an example of an acidic buffer. But before I consider an example of an acidic buffer, allow me to remind you what an acidic buffer is. We say that acidic buffer is that solution made by mixing a weak acid and the sort of a weak acid and a strong base. Or one can say an acidic buffer is the solution made by mixing a weak acid and its sort of a strong base. For example, uh, as I talk about the process of acidic buffer, allow me first uh, consider, the first step would be uh, consider a mixture of uh, ethanoic acid of ethanoic acid this ethanoic acid is my weak acid which I'm considering and we say that the formula is CH3 COOH and because it must be a mixture of a weak acid and a sort of a strong base. So, and sodium ethanoate. And sodium ethanoate. And sodium ethanoate is CH3COONN. Now, after having considered your mixture, we know that these two are different in strength and therefore they dissociate or ionize differently. So this one, the sodium ethanoate, will completely dissociate. And when it dissociates, it gets partitioned. Dissociating is like a, a splitting. So it will dissociate forming ethanoate ions and sodium ions. So our other point would be sodium ethanoate Sodium ethanoate, sodium ethanoate completely dissociates, completely dissociates, producing, producing ethanoate ions, ethanoate ions, and sodium ions. This is not enough because this is a very wide statement. It needs to be understood very well. And for me to understand this statement very well, I needed to summarize it with an equation. So we have sodium ethanoate, CH3, COONA. So let's call it CH3 corona. So it depends. I see Bridget smiling. I don't know whether Kona is the one that is taking her, but it is CH3COONA. It will completely dissociate, meaning it is going to split into two. So you are going to have CH3COO minus, these are ethanoate ions, plus sodium ions. You cannot ionize 
or dissociate something and then you expect to have similar charges. Sodium is positively charged, as we know. Ethanoic ions are negatively charged. Now, what about ethanoic acid? Ethanoic acid is a weak acid. So, ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid, being a weak acid will slightly ionize, slightly ionizes, producing ethanoate ions, producing ethanoate ions, and hydrogen ions, and hydrogen ions. Peter is saying, wait a bit. Yes, Peter, let me make you understand this. Why do we produce hydrogen ions? Because ethanoic acid, as the name suggests, it is an acid. And you know that an acid is a substance which when dissolved in water or which when ionized produces hydrogen ions as the only positively charged ions. And therefore, when ethanoic acid ionizes, it does that partially, so I need to see those double arrows, forming ethanoate ions and a proton, hydrogen ion. We can continue and say the ionization, the ionization of ethanoic acid, it's better when you're presenting you use words, actually use words, the ionization of ethanoic acid is suppressed by a high concentration, by a high concentration of ethanoate ions, by a high concentration of ethanoate ions. Good. Now, this equation, one can write, can write it as ethanoate ions because one may ask, but you're saying ionize. It will ionize in water. When it ionizes in water, it will do that slightly or partially, producing ethanoate ions. and hydrogen ions. Now, the fact that the ionization of ethanoate ions is suppressed by a high concentration of ethanoate ions, right? the ionization of ethanoic acid is suppressed by a high concentration of ethanoate ions, it would mean, let me say, therefore, the solution or our buffer, the solution contains a high concentration, contains a high concentration of ethanoate ions, it contains a high concentration of ethanoate ions and high concentration and high concentration of an ionized and ionized ethanoic acid and ionized ethanoic acid because we said that the ionization of ethanoic acid is suppressed or is limited by a high concentration of ethanoate ions meaning that at the end of the story we have a high concentration of ethanoate ions and a high concentration of the ethanoic acid that did not ionize. So we are going to continue. I'm going to rub here. We continue and see now. If you add a small amount of an acid, what happens to the pH? If you add a small amount of an alkali, what happens to the acid? Because remember, we say that pH, rather we say that a buffer solution is that solution that resists pH changes when small amounts of an acid or a base are added. So let's see 
when we add small amounts of an acid and a base, what happens? I see Mr. Richard is smiling. It seems the thing is coming very, very, very wet. So let's see when we add a small amount of an acid, what happens? So when we add an acid to this solution, what happens? Now we are going to write and say when a, a small amount, when a small, this is another note, when a small amount of an acid is added, comma, when you add an acid, it means that an acid you're going to add has hydrogen ions. So those hydrogen ions will combine with the ethanoic ions producing ethanoic acid. So when a small amount of an acid is added, uh, ethanoic ions react with hydrogen ions from an acid added producing ethanoic acid producing ethanoic acid and the moment you produce ethanoic acid this resists a decrease which resists a decrease in pH. Here we are having ethanoic ions alright are reacting with hydrogen ions producing ethanoic acid. So we are producing ethanoic acid implying that the system or the equilibrium we have shifted to the left because we initially had ethanoic acid and it had associated to produce this and now these ones are combining to produce it again so the equilibrium has shifted to the left now this one limits or resists the decrease in the pH that is when you add a small amount of an acid and the acid has got hydrogen ions which hydrogen ions would react with the ethanoic ions to give ethanoic acid again what about when you add a base? Uh, when you add a small amount of a base, when a small amount of a base is added, comma. Remember, a base has got hydroxide ions. It can be an alkali. Here, an acid has got hydrogen ions. So, when a small amount of a base is added, uh, the hydrogen ions, I beg your, the hydrogen ions from partial or slight ionization, from partial or slight ionization of ethanoic acid from partial or slight ionization of ethanoic acid react with the hydroxide ions from the added base from the added base to produce water to produce water what is this implying? An acid you've added, rather a base you have added OH, because a base can be sodium hydroxide, it can be potassium hydroxide, that base you've added will react with the hydrogen ions from the partial dissociation of the acid producing water. What does it mean? It means that 
as the hydrogen ions are removed, as the hydrogen ions are removed from the other acid, as the hydrogen ions are keeping being removed, more of the acid will keep dissociating in order to maintain the pH constant. So we shall go, we shall go and note and say that as the hydrogen, as the hydrogen ions are removed, as the hydrogen ions are removed, all right, uh, ethanoic acid dissociates. It keeps dissociating to pro keep providing those hydrogen ions. So it dissociates to replace. It dissociates to replace the used up hydrogen ions. The used up hydrogen ions. And as it replaces the hydrogen ions, the, the pH is kept almost constant. Keeping the pH almost constant. So we shall realize that addition of a base or an acid maintains the pH of an acid buffer almost constant. So we shall say therefore, therefore, the pH of the solution, the pH of the solution remains almost constant almost constant when small amount of an acid or base is added now i'm going to summarize this thing for you in two minutes. I'm going to summarize this thing for you in two minutes using equations so that we understand it very well. So let me rub here and then summarize it for you all I've discussed in terms of equations. So, and that one is being done as a request from Christine. Christine is saying, sir, can you give us a summary of what you've written in equations? Now, the equations I was putting them there, but let me give them in summarized way. We have said that an acidic buffer is having ethanoic acid which partially ionizes. And as it partially ionizes to produce ethanoate ions and hydrogen ions. And you said it also contains sodium ethanoate. And this sodium ethanoate completely dissociates to produce ethanoate ions and sodium ions. So we have said that the concentration of ethanoate ions is high, and also the concentration of an ionized ethanoic acid is also. Hi. Now, when you add an acid, addition of acid, when you add an acid, an acid has got hydrogen ions, so ethanoate ions from the salt will react with the hydrogen ions from the acid which you're adding to form ethanoic acid. And when you add a base, we said when you add a base, the basic ions, which are the hydroxide ions, react with the hydrogen ions from partial dissociation of an acid, producing water, and to maintain the equilibrium, more of the acid will keep dissociating so that it replaces the used up hydrogen ions, keeping the pH almost constant. So that is how I can discuss about the action of the acid buffer. In our next video, I'm going to talk about the action of the alkaline buffer.